Okay, so we're finally ready to actually look at the formula itself, but before we do that, I want you to understand the parts of the formula. So three parts, yeah. So there's four requirements to be a binomial. There's four parts inside the formula, and then the formula itself is made up of three parts. A lot of overwhelming numbers. But anyways, the first part of the problem is we need to multiply the number of ways x can happen with two other things. So that's where our combination button came in. We're gonna be multiplying it with the probability of success x times. So getting that thing we wanted as many times as we needed it to happen, but there's the rest of the stuff. That means we have to multiply with the probability of failure the rest of the time. So all the other times come out into the formula. So now let's go ahead and look at the formula itself where those items above are translated into their mathematical equivalents. So the red part, the number of ways X can happen, we're gonna use the combination button on our calculator to get a value. We are then going to multiply that with the purple part, the probability of success, X times. P was the probability of success, and if it happens a certain amount of times, or in this case, X times, we're gonna be multiplying them with each other, and so repeated multiplication leads to exponents. So we'll have that probability, maybe it's one sixth to the 12th power, because we wanted it to happen 12 times. And for the orange part, failure the rest of the time, remember Q is the complement of P, Q represents failure. And if we're doing something N times, and X of them we got successful, then N minus X is gonna give us the rest of the time. And then I also had mentioned prior that the combination button, the red portion, sometimes is written in its factorial format. So if you were asking someone for help or looking for um, help on the internet, you might see the formula written in the factorial format where the first part is factorials and the next two parts are ultimately the same. Maybe they don't have parentheses or maybe they have parentheses before the exponents, but either way, it's all the same thing. The one thing I have found is that people often struggle entering this whole formula all the way across in their um, calculator. So, you know, we still have these three parts we need to enter. So if you want to do it one part at a time, that's fine, and then multiply all those parts together. But super important, do not round as you go through each part. It's important to keep as many decimal numbers as you see until you get to the final answer and then follow those directions. So now we're actually going to use the formula on a problem, and we've seen this first problem before, but find the probability that exactly 10 flights arrive on time out of 15 flights if there's an 80% on time rate. Now, I'd already found the four parts that I'm gonna need for the formula, but I always like to do it each time I solve a problem. I always wanted to find success, which in this case is a flight on time. I want to know how many flights I'm looking at. So there were 15 flights. How many did I want to be successful? 10. What's the probability that any given flight was successful? 80%, but remember we had talked about writing it as a decimal because I'm gonna be using it in the formula. And so the probability of failure was the complement, the other 20% or 0.2. So to find the probability of 10, 10 flights on time, first thing I had to do was the NCR portion. So 15 flights, choose 10 to be successful. So I'll use that button for my calculator. Then I want P to the X power so for me, 0.8 to the 10th power, an 80% chance of being on time 10 times. And failure, which is the 0.2, the rest of the time. So of the 15 flights minus the 10 that arrived on time, that means there would be five not on time, five failures. So if you could enter that all into your calculator at once, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, I'll do it in parts and write down everything, remembering to write as much decimals, as many decimal numbers as I can. So when I do the red portion, 15 choose 10 on my calculator, 3,003. This will always be a whole number. Really important to note because sometimes people read their calculator wrong or enter something wrong and get a decimal, and that's a big hint you made a mistake. The number of ways something can happen will always be a whole number. When I take 0.8 to the 10th power, and hopefully you know how to do uh, more than squared exponents on your calculator, I get 0.107, oh, et cetera, and it keeps going, so I write the whole thing down, although I didn't here. And when I do 0.2 to the fifth, 
I get 0 0.00032. 0, 0, 0, now, if I hadn't done this whole thing at once in my calculator and I just written the parts down, to save myself time, this middle number is the longest and has the most decimal numbers. So what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll hit clear on my calculator and enter 0.8 to the 10th so that this number pops up. That way I didn't have to type it. And now, and I'll hit times, you know, 3,003. And instead of even hitting times 0032, it might be faster to even hit times 0.2 to the fifth, but you know, your calculator's gotta do the correct order of operations. So regardless of which way you get it into your calculator, the final result should be 0.10318, et cetera. But as I've been doing before, I always like to answer as a percent with one place to the right of the decimal. So I need to move the decimal over, decide if I round the three, and because it's followed by a one, I don't. And I'm gonna get 10.3 for my final answer. Okay, and so to look at another example, um, perhaps you wanna try it on your own and check your answer, pause and you know come back and hit play. Or maybe you know with each step, kind of stop and pause before I move along. But anyways, reading question two. For a certain company, 2% of all watches shipped have a defect, meaning something's wrong with them. What is the probability of finding three defects in a shipment of 50 watches? So we're assuming not three different imperfections, but three watches with a defect. So again, I like to define my parts. Maybe you wanna try that and check. I wrote success was a bad watch. I mean, I should have used the word defect, but this is just off to the side for me. How many watches am I looking at? 50. How many do I want to see if they're successful? Which again, success is a bad thing. It's a bad watch, a defect, but there's three. What's the probability of a defect? 0 0.02. Watch out, because for 2%, a lot of times people forget that when you convert it to a decimal, you need to move the decimal two places to the left to get 0 0.02. And that means 98% of watches were good. The complement. So to find the probability of three watches being defective, I start with the combination piece, which is 50 watches, choose three to be bad or defective. Now the probability of success that many times. So P to the X power or 0.02 cubed and failure the rest of the time, 0.98 to the remaining 47th power, right? If there are 50 watches and three are defective, then 47 should not be defective. So the combination button on my calculator gave me 19,600, huge whole number. 0 0.02 cubed gave me point, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0008, I don't even know if I said enough zeros. And 0 0.98 to the 47th, oh, sorry, first I forgot to mention the um, 0.02 cubed gave me scientific notation on my calculator. We had talked about that before, how it's eight e to the negative six, meaning I need to move that invisible decimal on the right side of the eight, six places to the left. And now for the orange part, I get some number that goes off the edge of my calculator. So again, whatever order you wanna enter stuff in on your calculator, you should get a final number of 0 0.060669. I move the decimal to be just after that first six and need to decide if the zero rounds up or not, which in this case it does. And I get a final answer of 6.1% chance. So not a big chance, but it's because there's not that many watches that we're looking to see if they're defective. If you took 50 times 0.02, sorry, 50 times 0 0.02 to see the probability or how many should be defective, it was only one. So the probability of getting three defective should be pretty small.